24 years ago, there were certain rumors about a time traveler visiting Earth. Only, they weren't rumors, but the truth. This mysterious traveler across time had much to say about the future. Reports of war, disease, and economic disaster all loomed in the face of humanity. After delivering his messages, he returned to his timeline. There was nothing more he could do. Fast forward into the future, and some of his predictions have been accurate. Some believe it's only a matter of time before they all are. On November 2nd, 2000, a certain person with the username TimeTravel underscore zero created an account on the Time Travel Institute forums and opened several discussions about time travel in general. Initially, his posts weren't related to future events, but focused on time travel, starting with describing the essential components required for a functioning time machine. For this video, I'll be referring to this person as time. In layman's terms, Time described this machine as a device powered by two special energy sources that created a unique energy pattern, allowing it to move through time. In some later posts, he provided a more detailed list of its features, as well as pictures. According to Time, the device was installed in a 1967 Chevrolet Corvette convertible and later relocated to a 1987 four-wheel drive truck. This was how he described his time machine. Listen closely. The time travel device has a ramp up time after the destination coordinates are fed into the computers. An audible alarm and a small light start a short countdown, at which point you should be secured in a seat. The gravity field generated by the unit overtakes you very quickly. You feel a tug toward the unit similar to rising quickly in an elevator, and it continues to rise based on the power setting the unit is working under. At 100% power, the constant pull of gravity can be as high as 2 Gs or more depending on how close you are to the unit. There are no serious side effects, but I try to avoid eating before a flight. No bright flash of light is seen, and outside the vehicle appears to accelerate as the light is bent around it. We have to wear sunglasses or close our eyes as this happens due to a short burst of ultraviolet radiation. Personally, I think it looks like you're driving under a rainbow. After that, it appears to fade to black and remains black until the unit is turned off. We are advised to keep the windows closed, as a great deal of heat builds up outside the car. Now, this all seems convincing, but some people weren't falling for this unknown user's claims. Members of the forum wanted to know who he was and where exactly he came from, and that's when he dropped the bombshell. It is difficult to describe 2036 in detail without spending a great deal of time explaining why things are so different. In 2036, I live in central Florida with my family, and I'm currently stationed at an army base in Tampa. A world war in 2015 killed nearly 3 billion people. After the war, life is centered around the family and the community. I can't imagine living even a few hundred miles away from my parents. There is no large industrial complex creating masses of useless food and recreational items. Food and livestock are grown and sold locally. People spend much more time reading and talking together face to face. Religion is taken seriously, and everyone can multiply and divide in their heads. I have met or seen myself twice on different world lines. The first was a training mission, and the second is now. I was born in 1998, so my other self is on this world line. There is a saying where I come from, every possible thing that can happen or will happen has already happened somewhere. Dozens of form users wanted to know if this device he described was controllable. Could we freely access space-time travel, as he was claiming? Well, according to time, time travel can be controlled. However, the distortion unit has operational limits. Imagine your path through time is through a cone. The farther away from the center of the cone, the more differences you will see in the world line. In his words, the time rift threshold begins to break away at about 60 years. This meant that the level of confidence dropped rapidly after 60 years of travel, and the world line divergence increased. In other words, if you wanted to go back 2,000 years and meet Christ, there's a better than average chance that you would end up on a world line where he was never born. Luckily, the computer units and gravity sensors record your trip and you could easily return to your point of origin. Time also stated that research was being done on faster units with more accurate clocks, which meant there was a higher chance of future prospects going farther back with a higher degree of accuracy. When the machine is on, everything is black. When turned off, the world fades in from black, like waking up from a dream. You often sleep through the transition, but notice the effect when you're awake. 
The hard part of traveling through time is not the bending of gravity, but the plotting of your course and holding to the basic position in your environment. This is done through a system called Variable Gravity Lock, or VGL. The VGL scans the environment before making a jump. It includes clocks and gravity sensors that take readings of the surroundings. If something like a cement block were in the way, the machine would automatically backtrack until it found a spot with a matching gravitational signature. Choosing the perfect location is crucial as the machine can't move during the displacement process. It requires careful planning and precision to ensure a successful jump. In many posts, Time claimed he wasn't a physicist, but his description of how time travel works seemed remarkably convincing. Time travel is made possible by manipulating gravity, a concept already supported by atomic clock experiments. The stronger the gravitational pull, the slower time passes. This effect, known as gravitational time dilation, can also be achieved by high-speed travel, resulting in the twin paradox. However, this method isn't sufficient to change your timeline. Time's claims are not so far-fetched, you see. The mathematical framework for altering timelines already exists. Tipler's time machine idea uses massive rotating spheres to manipulate gravity for time travel. Way back in 1974, an American physicist proposed the concept of the Tipler cylinder, an object capable of creating a closed, time-like curve enabling time travel. The majority of the community, members and even guests on the forums were quite interested in what time had to say. Yes, they were asking many questions, but that was because there had been several fakes on the website prior. Some immediately believed Time's theories, some were hesitant but eventually succumbed, and some, let's just say, aggressively disapproved. A minute fraction wanted to believe if he could predict something of value to them, like what team would win the Super Bowl that year, or maybe any stock predictions. He turned deaf ears to those. However, several questions remained, like who this person was working for. More importantly, why wait until the year 2000 to pay a visit? Why now? Alright, two things to note here. Successful time travel has been invented in the future, and some dude was claiming to be from said future. One big difference. Time claimed the future had drastically changed from what we know now, and these changes were severe. Time travelers keep a low profile for a reason. You can't travel forward in time without an invitation from the future. You don't alter history and can only influence events just like anyone else. It's ironic that people worry about time travelers disrupting their timeline when they make choices every day that shape their world. My goal isn't to convince you. Most people don't take well to news of upcoming wars, but they often accept it as inevitable. History shows that innovation and progress often emerge during times of conflict driven by the desire to develop new ways to harm each other. There are some differences you may be interested in. Religion is a major part of people's life in 2036. Pain and change tend to bring people together and closer to God. However, religion is far more personal than it is now. There are no huge centralized religions and people talk openly about their beliefs. Most of the same music you enjoy is available on the archive. However, the days of megastars playing multiple tracks, studio-produced music, and lip-syncing on a huge stage are pretty much isolated to your time period. Like everything else, music is much less centralized. The general trend is away from computer-generated music and more toward real people playing real instruments. Music is much more of a personal experience. More people know how to read music and play together in small groups. Entertainment is less centralized. There are movies and TV, but everything is distributed over the net and more people produce their shows. Life is much more rural in the future, but high technology is used to communicate and travel. People raise a great deal of their food and do more farm work. Yes, compared to now, we do work long hours. After the war, my father made a living selling oranges up and down the west coast of Florida. My closest friend raises horses and another works for a company that maintains wireless internet nodes. Let's not forget that this was back in 2000. Time was making some pretty aggressive claims that later came to pass in the next decade. Pretty amazing. Self-published video content was nowhere to be found 24 years ago, but in the last decade we've seen the rise of TikTok, YouTube, and even streaming platforms like Hulu and Netflix. Imagine your friend telling you the next Kendrick or Drake concert wouldn't sell out, or that Spotify and Apple Music would be out of business very soon. You'd call them crazy, but this was Time's future. People could read music sheets and preferred real musical instruments, and it was happening. 
Shortly afterward, on November 8th, 2000, a very active forum user, Pamela Moore, sent this message to our mystery man, Time. What started the war? Who fought in it? And who won? Time's predictions painted a grim future. There was a civil war in the United States that started in 2005. That conflict flares up and down for 10 years. The major problems in world events start with the West becoming unstable due to poor U.S. foreign policy decisions. This led to chaos in the U.S. around the 2004 presidential election. Israel is not ready for an all-out war, only for defense. As Western support for Israel weakens, its neighbors gain confidence to attack. Both sides may resort to weapons of mass destruction. The Middle East war is just one part of a larger, upcoming conflict, not the main cause. In 2015, Russia launched a nuclear strike against the major cities in the United States, China, and Europe. The United States counterattacks. The U.S. cities were destroyed along with the American federal empire. Thus, we in the country won. According to Time, this all started in 2004. But what if he was wrong because he missed a number? What if he meant 2024 and not entirely 2004? Time spoke about the U.S. elections. Well, that comes up in a few months because we are in 2024. He also said Israel isn't ready for an all-out war. In case you've not been on the internet, the Israel-Hamas war is ongoing and as of June 2024, over 38,000 people have been killed. The U.S. economic state was another thing Time predicted. According to surveys in 2022 and 23, inflation is ranked as the country's top issue in Pew Research Center. That's not good news. Year after year, prices have slowly risen to 2.6%, previously down from 2.7%, but now it's getting dangerous. It's beginning to look like time is legit. It seemed like one day there wasn't a time traveler among us, and suddenly here he was. But why? Why was he visiting this timeline? And why did he return to the past? Well, luckily it's not to save Sarah Connor. On the 15th of November that year, Time posted this message on the board in response to a previous question. He claimed he was sent back in time to retrieve an IBM 5100 computer system. According to him, these computers had a special feature that no one was aware of. They could read older IBM programming languages. Time states that he was sent back to 1975 to retrieve a computer system and return to the year 2036. On his way back to his world line, he decided to stop in 2000 for personal reasons. He revealed that there were seven other travelers in his unit and the time machine was being used to get items that would help restore the world to normalcy post-World War III. They needed this computer to debug legacy computer programs in 2036. The problem was that older computer systems used a small container called to store dates and times. This container could only hold a certain range of dates, up to January 19th, 2038. After that date, the container would overflow and cause problems with said dates and times on the system. As for the reason why he was chosen for this mission, well, that was because his paternal grandfather was part of the team responsible for making the device. Yet again, there were scores of doubters to Time's story. His story was getting popular and form users increased. Some of these new users thought he was up to no good. He promptly responded, How can you possibly criticize me for any conflict that comes to you? I watch every day what you are doing as a society. While you sit by and watch your constitution being torn away from you, you willfully eat poisoned food, buy manufactured products no one needs, and turn an uncaring eye away from millions of people suffering and dying all around you. Is this the universal law you subscribe to? Perhaps I should let you all in on a little secret. No one likes you in the future. This time period is looked at as being full of lazy, self-centered, civically ignorant sheep. Perhaps you should be less concerned about me and more concerned about that. Yeah, Time wasn't pleased with their nonchalance, and I'm not sure you can blame him. Even in today's society, most Americans are seen and constantly criticized for living in a bubble, often prioritizing their interests over global concerns. The criticism is rooted in various aspects such as limited news coverage, a history of isolationism, and a smudge of superiority complex. Wait a second, if time was from the future, why couldn't they just create this computer they needed so badly? I mean, these people could build something as complex as a time machine. Surely making an old computer wouldn't hurt. 
Time responded that, on his world line, it is known that the 5100 series is capable of reading all the IBM code written before the widespread use of APL and BASIC. They were all gone in his world line. Now, this might sound like a poor attempt at an excuse, but you see, in 2020 there were reports of NASA having to buy old parts for a space shuttle from eBay, because Intel no longer made them. So if that's true, that could mean time could be telling the truth. In January 2001, John Teeter, also known as Time, began posting to the Art Bell BBS forms. Every account needed a pseudonym on this form, thus John Teeter was born. Over a series of months, John made the same hefty claims as the Time Traveler about a world line he came from, but people now ignored his claims and wrote them off as someone seeking attention. Guess what? A lot of things he predicted came true. During his many posts in 2000, John foresaw advancements in solar and hydrogen fuel cells, which are now a thing today. It's also worth mentioning that back then, there were many talks about the instability of the internet, but John predicted the internet would survive and evolve. He even made remarks about how decentralized the entertainment industry would become, with people making their own shows. One hell of a prediction from over two decades ago. Three years before the outbreak, John Teeter predicted the mad cow disease in the United States. Similarly, John warned about the likelihood of the Y2K-like bugs affecting older systems, which came true in 2009. One of his most accurate, quote, predictions was the significant leap in artificial intelligence. Naturally, some of his predictions were inaccurate, but if you've been following, there's a solid explanation for this. The Everett Wheeler model. Some people also refer to this as the many worlds interpretation. Imagine you're at a fork in the road and you choose to go left. In the Everett Wheeler model, the universe splits into two parallel universes. One universe where you went left and another universe where you went right. This happens for every decision, event, and possibility, creating an infinite number of parallel universes. Each universe has a version of you with different outcomes and experiences. In one reality, you clicked the subscribe button but in other parallel universes, you didn't. I'm hoping this is the reality where you chose to subscribe, but I digress. This model simply means John Teeter's false claims may be right just in another reality. Here's another theory that supports John, temporal divergence. This concept suggests that every time a traveler makes a change in the past, it creates a new timeline or reality, rather than changing the existing one. This means that the original timeline remains intact, and a new branch or parallel universe is created. Think of it like a tree. The original timeline is the trunk. Each change made by a time traveler creates a new branch, or in this case, a new reality. So what's the difference between these theories? Here's the short version. The Wheeler model is a broader concept that applies to all quantum events, while divergence is more specific and applies to time travel and changes made to the past. In a way, John Teeter was right. This strange individual also seemed to have an inexplicable amount of advanced knowledge about space travel, computers, and the future. Nevertheless, there were a lot of theories from John that were also wrong. As such, when comparing John Teeter's predictions, the ones that failed to come through outnumber those that came to pass. You see, one of his biggest and darkest predictions was that of a civil war in 2005 and a nuclear war in 2015. They'd never happened. In his future, he claimed the Olympics were stopped after 2004, but here we are in 2024 witnessing another. In some of John Teeter's earlier posts, he claimed that CERN would discover the basis for time travel sometime around 2001. This event did not occur, and even with the technology being greater than it was back then, CERN has yet to discover time travel, though in all fairness, even if they did, we wouldn't know. A few years later, an article about miniature black holes being created by CERN surfaced online, but they were also false. Whenever these failed predictions are brought up, the John Teeter believers always respond with the parallel universe theory, and frankly, I would too. However, more evidence was coming to light that would expose John Teeter as a fraud, and not as John Connor. On May 19th, 2008, the Italian TV program Voyager at the Edge of Knowledge aired an investigation into John Teeter, which revealed some intriguing findings. Private investigator Mike Lynch discovered that there was no record of a person named John Teeter, either in the past or present. 
However, he did uncover the existence of the John Teeter Foundation, a for-profit entity established on September 16, 2003. Interestingly, the foundation had no physical office or address, except for a rented post office box in Kissimmee, Florida, suggesting a possible attempt to maintain anonymity. The very next year, in 2009, investigations by hoax hunter John Houston suggested that Larry Haber, a Florida entertainment lawyer, and his brother Richard, a computer scientist, were likely the individuals behind the John Teeter persona. The Haber brothers reportedly introduced John Teeter in 1998, initially predicting chaos related to the Y2K bug. By the way, that was a bust. Furthermore, Houston discovered that the John Teeter name was registered as a trademark, which is now listed as abandoned. Fast forward to more recent times in 2018, Joseph Matheny, a multimedia artist and creator of the alternate reality game Ong's Hat, revealed that he had acted as a consultant for the individuals behind the John Teeter legend. According to Matheny, the creators of the John Teeter story were inspired by his work on Ong's Hat and sought to create a similar literary experiment. On March 21, 2001, John Teeter told us he would be leaving our time and returning to 2036. After that, he was never heard from again. Even to this day, John's predictions spark a devoted following, with some individuals attempting to decipher his cryptic messages and uncover his true identity, despite the hard evidence available. Some believe it was all an excellent cover-up, while some believe it was nothing more than a good story. Now, remember when I mentioned CERN earlier and how John talked about them finding the basis of time travel? Well, while their scientists didn't discover time travel, they discovered something that's close to it. Something so mind-blowing and as well dangerous that it could destroy our existence as a human race, and yet the government still allows them to continue with these dangerous experiments. Perhaps the whole John Teeter story wasn't so crazy after all. <laughs>